Uh, let's do it this way. Kamala Harris tax plan is about to destroy America. All right, so this is a suggestion via a channel member. Uh, the name of the video is uh, Dangerous. Uh, Economist explains what Kamala Harris's tax plan Kamala means for you. Guys, it doesn't look good. Like, I've read into it, and I'm just like, listen, um, if you want to quickly have corporations leave uh, for places like Dubai or Ireland, please, please enact that tax plan, Kamala Harris. Yes, totally. I mean, because if you want, if you want, corporations don't want to be protected by the best military in the world. By all means, don't headquarter yourselves here. Headquarter yourselves in someplace else that won't be able to protect you as well. Harris, right? It's anti-growth, for example. I, I don't believe you, but let's see what arguments are made. Uh, about this because again i don't believe you because what happens is once you start getting to the crazy numbers that she's actually actually asking for um growth slows down because why would i want to consistently make this much copious money basically in the united states of america why would i want to do that like how does that foster growth why would you want to do that because you're making a copious amount of money and you're doing so in in a nation that has the best military that can protect your assets i mean do you want to trust the Dubai government to protect your assets? No, I don't think so. You're punishing me for you're punishing me and anyone else who, who does business in any meaningful manner, right? Uh, the reason there's not they're not punishing you for doing business. They're punishing you for circumventing the rules of business in order to try and not pay your fair share in taxes, which is why you need new laws to put in place to deal with the shenanigans that you're playing as a business person to avoid those taxes that you should be paying to cover the things like you know roads and bridges you didn't build that someone else made that happen um any of the people who own corporations uh are going to be suffering through this right here right what's gonna no happen they're gonna leave they're gonna sure they're all gonna leave all the businesses are gonna leave all their customers behind and go to dubai and ireland Totals makes perfect sense. Don't leave. Period. Right? But all right, let's go ahead and see where this, this goes, guys. I mean, do you want to know the fastest way to destroy our economy even more than it's already destroyed? Please, come on. Uh, you can enact Trump's tariffs, and that will kill the farmers, and the farmers will then have to get subsidies from the government to help pay off the losses that they had to deal with because the tariffs killed the farmers. But, you know. Harris. Enact that disastrous plan. Let's see what this takes us. Ronald Reagan, of course, made cutting taxes the centerpiece of his campaign for president back in 1980. Mm -hmm. And yes, he made good on his promise once elected, signing into law what was then the largest tax cut in history. This time. And that doesn't make it a good thing or the smart thing or the wise thing to do. It just means that that's what he did. I'm around as we've been talking about Kamala Harris campaigning on raising taxes Ooh. for many Americans. This is oh, he's so hurting. Ooh, raising the corporate tax rate to a to a whopping twenty eight percent from twenty one. What'd you think of the billionaires? What'd you think of the billionaires and how they'll survive if they have to pay seven percent more? Oh no! <clears throat> and then you know the the, the stack tax tax rate on stock buybacks from one percent to four percent because you know. Instead of putting the money into the economy like you're supposed to, they, you know, they're, they're, like they claim they're going to do, they instead do things like stock buybacks, which is what we said when, when Donald Trump was like, oh, we want to help um, al allow the uh, people, the corporations to repatriate their funds, and we want to let them do it for free. And the Democrats are, of course, like, well, why would we want them to do it for free? All they're going to do with it is they're going to give bonuses out to their executives and they're going to do stock buybacks. Oh, no, that's not going to happen, says Lucy with the football. And what happens? They were repatriated their funds. AT&T didn't give their bonuses. Uh, they they did st uh, Corporations did stock buybacks. They did everything that we would predict they would do. And it, it did not help the American people in the slightest. Top, top income tax rate, 37% to 39.6%. Oh no, what will you ever do if that, if, you know, it, again, these people like to pretend like when you get, when you're taxed at 39.6%, that it's not the marginal rate on the highest income bracket, 
that it's just that that the people are getting going to pay 39% 39.6 across the board. No, it's only on those funds that are above and beyond a certain the certain threshold of that next lowest tax bracket. And corporate minimum tax rate from 15% to 21. Again, oh no. What will they do? So, okay, so guys, I've seen some of the numbers, but I'm not sure I actually seen like this type of graph regarding them. Guys, this is ridiculous. Like yeah, it's ridiculous that you're making a mountain out of a molehill over this. Those are not insane. You want to know what taxes were like back in the 50s and the 40s when you could like, I mean, yeah, you could write off any interest that you paid, but the, the marginal tax rate, the top marginal tax rate was what, 90%? This is nowhere near that. And he's trying to cry me a river. Not a river in Crimea, but he's, you know, trying to actually cry a river. It's ridiculous. Like 37% is already wild. Okay. Now to raise it means what? Again, 37% on the top marginal, that top bracket, i.e. the highest earners who have more to protect, you know, militarily wise or whatever. They have more skin in the game that needs protecting, right? So if you need, if, if you have more stuff to be protected, you should be paying more for that stuff to be protected, right? That means that everyone is going to suffer from this here. And if you think that the top... Everyone's going to suffer from this. No, if I'm not in the top tax, top, if I'm not doing stock buybacks, if I'm not dealing with uh, a C corp and corporate tax rates, if, if I'm not having a dealing with a corporate minimum tax rate, none of this is going to apply to me. None whatsoever. So no, it's only going to affect the top earners who are not going to go move to Dubai or Ireland. Top 1% of 1%, basically, uh, is going to suffer from this. You're crazy. They're not going to suffer from this. It's going to be the ones who do not have tax write-offs that are going to suffer from this, meaning the overwhelming majority of the, of the United States of America who do not run businesses through S-Corp. So if I don't have tax write-offs, then that's somehow I'm somehow affected by stock buybacks? If I don't have tax write-offs, I'm not affected by, I'm going to be affected by the 39.6%, right? I mean, granted, I'd love to be in the position where my top income tax rate goes from 37 to 39.6%, because that means I'm making a crap ton of money. Yay me. I'm not crying about this if I'm making that much money. Oh, corporate minimum tax rate, 15 to 20 more percent. Oh, no. C corps or or uh, LLCs, guys, right? These individuals are going to suffer, which is the overwhelming majority of Americans. All right, that's who's suffering from this right here. Okay, to be honest, the corporate tax is also wild, right? Wild. Um, everything's wild by this guy. This, everything's wild. It's wild that you don't have an understanding of who this actually will affect. Oh, it's seven percent. <laughs> that's that's a crazy one here. Uh, the stock buyback. I'm guessing, I'm guessing we're going to be getting into unrealized gains also, speculate. And we should be getting into unrealized gains because that is another thing that's on the, on the platform. But of course, you know, conservatives don't understand the unrealized gains thing either. But let's see what this takes us. Including boosting the top income tax rate to 39.6% and raising the corporate tax from 21 to 28%. I mean, this guy has definitely has more followers than me, but is he, re is he really going to get dinged by this top, top income tax rate if he is? Good for you for being able to make that much money with your YouTube channel. Awesome. Congratulations. Stop bitching. Right. Yikes. Joining me now, Earth. Heritage Foundation okay. economist, former Trump economic advisor, Steve Moore. I mean, Steve, there couldn't be more dramatic. Steve Moore, there couldn't be more, right? Is that a pun intended? Opposing views on, on how this economy should be run. Um, <laughs> You know, look, I, I just mentioned to Jim Urio there, Steve, look, what would happen? This this tax on, on you know, realized gains. I mean, the taxes on on the so-called rich and it's always the middle class that ends up getting soaked. Every single How is the middle class going to get so soaked by the tax, by the unrealized gains tax? Every single time. I mean, Every single time. dangerous stuff, is it not? 
It sure is. And, you know, I did live through the Reagan era. I came to uh, the, yep. uh, Washington, D.C. in 1984 and actually had the privilege of my life of working in the Reagan administration for Ronald Reagan. Ah. And you're right. When here, Here's an amazing statistic. When Reagan came... Amazing statistic. That's probably distorted. ...came into office, actually, the top income tax rate in the United States was 70%. 70%. When he Oof. left office... But what could you write off? Again... A lot of the times in this conversation, that's why I made it a point to preface it. Back in the 50s, we may have had a 90% marginal tax rate, but it's also what can be taxed. There's no difference between having a 50% tax rate where only 20% of your income is taxable and a 20% of your tax rate where 50% of your income is taxable. There's no difference between the two. It's the same amount of money. It's the highest highest rate was 28%. That's a, that's a very yeah. dramatic reduction in taxes. Mm -hmm. Does that, does that make it good, right, or fair, or just? Does that mean it was a smart thing to do? Probably not. Because Reagan, Reaganomics is based on the falsehood of trickle-down. Reaganomics is based on the falsehood of supply-side economics, if you build it, they would come, or whatever. Reaganomics is based on a whole bunch of BS and malarkey uh, that the conservatives wanted to try and sell us, and somehow they managed to convince uh, enough people in the country to actually do it. And then we end up seeing exactly how poorly it ends up being. And yet, guess what happened to tax revenues? Oh, it went crazy. Bro, it went super crazy. Tell me. They went up. Oh, of course <laughs> it did. They went way up. You're going to pay more did. taxes. Yeah, and by the way... Yeah, because they made more money, right? Growth, right? The reason why they paid more taxes is because they made more money. They were allowed... Again, it also depends on what's being taxed. So you can you can you can paint it different ways. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're paying actual differences. And 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 I I am going to wholeheartedly disagree with the idea that it they they started paying more money overall in taxes just because they cut the taxes. Uh, George W. Bush called that something DOO economics, voodoo economics, and the Laffer curve, for example, where. You're on a curve, and you, you, you tax at a rate and here, and your tax rate is here. You have, you have the same number of income or whatever because of this supposed theory that if, 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 you, if you cut taxes, you increase revenue. That's BS. It can happen, but it's not guaranteed to happen, and you can't possibly know it's going to happen because there's a whole bunch of other wild cards that come into play, and that's the people who are, are proponents of the Laffer curve will tell you that – you know, oh, it's going to mean we're going to bring we're going to bring in more revenue by cutting their taxes. Okay, sure, Jan, sure, uh, Lucy with the football. Why should we believe you? I have no reason to believe you on that because again, there's no reason why you're going to want to propose a situation where your company pays more in taxes. You're always going to fight paying more in taxes. Period. How to make more money? Wow. Right? So how about this? Stop doing the, the virtue signal uh, aspect of things, Kamala Harris, and just understand. It's not about virtue signaling, dude. It, this is not about virtue signaling. This is about understanding the games that corporations play in order to try and keep from having to pay the taxes, their fair share of taxes. So you have to come at it in different, more creative ways. Or you put Donald Trump in there who doesn't give a crap about corporations paying taxes. Um, he's because he wants to cut his own and make sure that he makes has to pay as little as possible while benefiting from all of the government programs that protect him, etc. And how uh, the economy should basically run, right? If you allow corporations to make more money, they're making so much money that the tax dollars, right, uh, are being basically funneled into the United States of America. That eh, wrong. Sorry, dude. If you, if if. These corporations that make lots of money will try like the double Irish scheme or other sort of tax hiding schemes as a way to pr protect their money from being taxed. If you if you allow them allow them to make more money, they're going to make money regardless because they're going to find you know people that are demanding a good or a service and they're going to supply that good or a service to the people who are demanding it, and the people are probably going to pay for it if it can be produced at a reasonable cost.
That has nothing to do with what it, it, now. If if they're if you're gonna whatever your tax rate is, you know, yeah. Oh, let's let's cut their taxes because we're gonna believe that they're gonna bring it down and pay more to the American people and pay more taxes. Yeah, again, Charlie Brown and the football. That's how we make money, not by making it extremely restrictive so all of the corporations uh, or people that run businesses leave the. All of the corporations are gonna leave if we enact Kamala Harris's tax plan. That is the just most mind-numbingly dumb thing you could you could say. No, they're not all going to leave. Most of them are going to stay. Do so you think Tesla's going to pick up and go just because Vice President Harris, once she becomes president, is able to enact uh, these tax laws? I mean, <coughs> what he'll probably do is he'll probably try and pay people to come up with creative ways to avoid these schemes because they have no interest in actually paying their fair share. And that's the thing that's happening here country where well, there's a curve behind this that you know about actually it's called the laffer curve sometimes when you uh, see even th they brought up the laffer curve again the people who promote the laffer curve are people who want you to think that you're actually going to get to kick the football can cut yes. tax rates you get more economic activity more investment the economy does better Gross. you get um, somebody watched ferris bueller's day off too much more revenues now I want to make this point because it's relevant to uh, RFK Jr., who has endorsed Donald Trump. Uh, the other big tax cutter of modern times, of course, was John F. Kennedy. When he came into office, the highest tax rate was 90 percent. He slashed the tax rates across the board. Yeah. He was very famous for saying that um, that uh, uh, that when tax rates are too high and tax rates... Again, he slashed the tax rates, but what was taxed? You couldn't write off as much interest, right? So it's still, you know, back then you could write off interest. Just an optics thing. Governors are too low. We have to cut the rates to make the economy grow faster. So if Reagan got that and John F. Kennedy got that, why can't Kamala Harris understand that? Because you don't necessarily know where you are on the supposed Laffer curve to know whether or not that cutting taxes will actually increase revenue or not if you believe that the Laffer curve is a true thing. You have to establish that before you before you try and make the argument that she should not be raising taxes because you're on the wrong part of the Laffer curve. You, it's your your responsibility to try and show me that we're on the position of the Laffer curve where raising taxes decreases revenue and increases taxes increasing or raising taxes decreases revenue and cutting taxes increases revenue. If you can't do that, then I have no reason to believe that you're telling the truth. And you're just bringing up the Laffer curve just to pleasure yourself with the invisible hand of the of the free market. That concept. Because the majority of the people who are going to vote for her do not care about any of these things. All they care about is the, the literal virtue signal of, hey, eat the rich. That's all they care about. right? It's not about eating the rich. It's about making sure that the rich can't get away with their shenanigans and BS, which they do which you don't seem to understand. And they say, oh, these people have money. I don't, so they shouldn't have money. That's what, that's- No, it's these people have money and should be paying taxes, but they're they're avoiding paying their taxes because the Republicans have cut funding to the IRS so that we can't do as much enforcement as we should do on their violation of the tax code. And, you know, they're gonna always try, they're gonna try other different ways to try and avoid paying whatever it is that they want to pay tax-wise, they're going to pay economists like this schlub to basically say, this guy, to basically say, oh, well, this is how I'm going to get away with not paying as much taxes as I should, and, well, let's take advantage of it because the law allows it, so Vice President Harris is campaigning on closing some of those loopholes, and you're sitting here thinking it's a great idea that we, or it's not a good idea at all, that, that, or, or that these people are saying great ideas and shutting down that idea and allowing these businesses to get away with all of their tax dodging shenanigans are good for the economy. No, it's not good for the economy. The wider your tax base is, the, the, the better it is. And if you so if you allow these big corporations to narrow their, their what they have to pay, then they're not contributing to the tax base as they should. That's all they care. They don't care about the actual, like, m the minutia of the actual point. They don't care about that at all. What's that to do? We care about the minutia here on Liberal Dan Radio. Talk from the left. That's right. But them, <laughs> they literally only care. They have money. 
I don't, so let's punish them. Not realizing that that actually... And here's the thing, most conservatives don't have that money either. The ones who are trying to say, oh, they don't... And the, and the MAGA folk, the poorly educated that Donald Trump said that he loved after their winning the 2016 Nevada primaries, they don't understand the Laffer curve. They don't understand anything having to do with economics and supply and demand. Uh, if they did that, they wouldn't have bought Donald Trump's whole deal of, or, or, or they wouldn't under, they wouldn't believe that Joe Biden was responsible for the gas hikes. They would understand that Donald Trump is responsible for the gas hikes if they understood how supply and demand works or how the economy works in general. They don't understand this. They'll repeat the BS that is, you know, they'll regurgitate the stuff they hear on talk radio like, oh, if, if you cut taxes, you, uh, you increase revenue. They'll repeat that. It's the worst oh. thing you hit play uh, my adjusting my ear they they won't they won't understand why that's the case they'll just regurgitate it because somebody they believe on the news said it's the case so they'll regurgitate the bs not understanding or being able to say why it's true or why it's not true or when it would be true when it would not be true you could possibly do because people leave that's oh yes they so leave good don't let the door hit your ass on the way out Someone will take your place. How about them apples? Very true. I mean, the Democratic Party today audio? was what not it? what it was under JFK. Exactly. That is for sure. That's true. I think, I think that party is a moderate Republican these days. Anyway, listen, you say that the American dream, sadly, out of reach for most Americans. Why is that? And how can we change it? Uh, because of uh, economies of scale and the fact that you have big corporations monopolizing things and making it impossible uh, for people to, you know, make it like they would in the previous days. And you have people like yourselves who want to allow the big businesses to run their monopolistic uh, companies and operate in their uh, in the ways that corporations like to operate and making sure that they don't pay their fair share in, in order to make money hand over fist so they can undercut anybody who tries to make it in uh, the same market that they're trying to make it in. That's why. That's why the American dream is, is severely curtailed, which is why you need to have policies that will go after people who are trying to um, play unfairly. And that's what Vice President Harris's plans will try and do. We'll try and make sure that the big corporations are playing in a more fair system. But y'all don't understand that, or y'all don't want to understand that. Y'all don't want your vote, your watchers and listeners to understand that. Y'all just want to make people believe that, oh, it's going to kill businesses and therefore it's going to harm you. Not None of which is true. Uh, because, uh, you know, when you define the American dream, it's a lot of things. But one of the hallmarks of the American dream is being, able, home? To afford, uh, being able to afford a home. Where? And you look at the numbers now, but I have two sons that are in their early 30s. They're about the age, stage of their life where they'd be looking at, you know, buying a home and starting mm -hmm. a family. You can't do that. They couldn't. Buy, and by the way, you know, they're middle class. They're doing pretty well, actually. They couldn't possibly afford to buy a house. I mean, now with these high interest mortgage interest rates, the, yeah. the uh, you know, you keep. The mortgage, the rates are low. I mean, the rates are relatively low, comparatively. Back to like, I remember back in the eighties, I had a certificate, I, I had a savings account that had that had an interest rate of twelve percent on my savings account. Why? Because mortgage interest was high. It was even higher than that, and so that's how I was able to get a savings account with like twelve percent interest in a credit union. Because the mortgage, the interest rates on the uh, on the loans were even higher, and Reagan was president back then. Go figure. You can't. You just cannot buy a house today, and that's true of people in their thirties and forties, where they're just priced out of the market. The average, because of Biden's policies and the massive increase in costs and and interest rates, a thirty-year mortgage, you're going to pay payments almost twice as high today as you did when when Donald Trump was president. Do we really want four more years of that? I don't want four more years of Donald Trump is going to you know put people's lives at risk in a pandemic. You know you can't spend your money if you're dead. But even then, I'm questioning much of what you're saying right then and there. Let's continue. No. I mean, let's keep this in mind. For, for the ones who own houses, yeah, we do. Right? I'm going to be honest. 
we do exclusively because we're selfish. I can be honest here, right? I mean, do I really want um, me to lose roughly 30, 40% of, equ- about 40% of equity in one year? No, I don't want that, right? But we do in fact need- Oh, so here he's being a hypocrite. He wa- he likes his high house cost because it will enable him to make more money. Need more property so people can actually afford homes, right? Uh, and people can stop doom spending. Uh, now, is it is it like feasible to be able to own, well own or afford a house right now? The average person cannot do that. I mean, I'm trying to afford two right now, but you know, that's because I have to pick up the mortgage payments on my mother-in-law's house. Let's continue. If you think about what 20% is on the median house price right now, you're talking a little bit over $100,000. Bro, who has $100,000 in cash in their bank right now? No one. Do you, have you seen the economy? Wait, where are you living where you have to put down 100000 on a house? That doesn't make any sense. A, normally with an FHA loan, you can put down only 5% on a loan to be able, on, on a mortgage. And B, um, prices, houses around here are maybe like, even even the houses that maybe were like 150 or now 200 that that's not a hundred thousand dollar down payment so again just more dishonesty in this whole video whatsoever let's continue come on yeah no kidding very You're quickly right. uh, no one's the, the august <laughs> jobs report out uh, next friday could be a game changer for the fed what are you expecting Jerome Powell, nothing. Well, you know, I, I've, I've given up guessing because, as you know, the, the, the yeah. Labor Department over the last year and a half has overestimated the jobs by over a million. Did you know that? 1.1 1. 1 million. I'm sure they did, right? Because, you know, you said so. Million overestimation wow. of jobs. So we keep yeah. having, I keep going on with Maria in the morning and, oh, we got 325,000 jobs. And then the next, no, it was 250, 225. Right. Yeah. So right. I don't have a clue where we're going to be, but I do think the economy is slowing down. Right. Listen, what did just point? We still have a better economy than most of the industrializations in the world because Joe Biden has clamped down on and made inflation so low enough where now it's not outpacing um, incomes. But, you know, don't let facts get in the way of your feelings. What I out here is these these fictitious job numbers that Biden basically made up out of thin air. Um, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's easy to do that if you change the classification of what actually a job is. Right? Um, if you make it so that all the all of the gig workers now are considered fully employed, not specifically underemployed, uh, then that makes all the sense in the world. Right? Uh, Why would a gig worker be not fully employed if they're doing full time work as a gig worker? Like when I was a gig worker and doing like Uber and Lyft, I was fully employed because I was doing it full time. But, you know, whatever. Again, don't let the facts get in the way of your feelings. Um, and that's why those numbers are fluctuating so rapidly, really, because uh, we're talking about people who are doing like Uber Eats, driving for Uber. Um. Again, as I said, drive, I drove for Uber. I used to do it full time. I was a full time gig worker. Did, did it make me any less of a full-time worker because I was doing, I mean, I was probably working more than 40 hours a week because I was trying to chase that money down. Now I, I did it smart. I, I, I did things that were in, you know, that were intelligent in my opinion. Like, you know, I, I checked to see when conventions were getting in town or when conventions were leaving town and tried to, you know, try work my way around in those areas to know, okay, well here, these are going to be the people wanting more airport rides. So therefore, that's where the bread and butter was, and especially in the mornings or mid-afternoons. So I'd go out and, and work between like 4 a.m. And, and 8 a.m. just to be able to catch all the people going to the airports. I'd then come home and then sleep till about 1 or 2 and then go back out and, you know, to pick up the afternoon airport rush and make money that way and then come back home for dinner and then maybe go back out later on further in the evening and, and you know, work as much as 12 hours in a day depending on what day it was, especially if it was a night, a weekend night, ooh, I would make bank back when you could make bank. Now they've made it so you can't make bank. Um, only a rare few who can figure it out, can get it done. And usually those people are the ones doing like Uber black or the, or the Lux cars or whatever. Uh, Grubhub, Seamless, all of these, these like food apps, right? Technically they are employed, right? But, but in fact, they're underemployed and these jobs really do not count. They shouldn't count for a drone. 
Jobs shouldn't count. People working shouldn't count. What? People doing work for a living shouldn't count because they're doing gig jobs. What else? What other jobs should it count? If I if I wait tables part time, does that not? If I if I waited tables part time, did other things part time, and kind of did an amalgamation of a bunch of jobs to kind of put a, a full time schedule together, does that somehow make mean that I'm not doing a full time job, full time work? That's BS. If I can't qualify, look, here's the deal. Here's what I'm gonna say to that point right there. If I can't, if it, if it stops me from getting unemployment, then it's a job. If I can't collect unemployment because I'm doing the work for that particular job, then it's a job and it should count as part of the job numbers. How about them apples? If you wanna take jobs things and classify them as not being jobs, then by all means, don't let it interfere with me. Uh, let me do gig work whilst collecting unemployment so I can make some extra bucks. But no, you're not going to support that, will you? Because that would be a government handout or whatever, and that would be bad. So no, if, if, if it's going to prevent me from getting unemployment benefits, it's a job. It counts. No matter how much you want to spit it that it should it, it should count. Powell to look at, uh, to even think about, thinking that the economy is still um, is still decent, right? He, bro, just lower the interest rates. Okay, make money just a little bit more affordable. But I, I keep this in mind here. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, he can't do that. He has to raise him. But I don't want him to raise him. <laughs> we don't want. <clears throat> What happened here? Uh, we do not want Jerome Powell, obviously, to raise the interest rates. But I do think that if you want to actually fix the economy, you have to make things uh, naturally expensive so people can, can. So would this guy make up his mind? So he wants things to be cheaper for the people, but now he wants things to be naturally expensive. Now you're pushing for policies that's going to increase inflation. This is why you should never vote for conservatism. Conservatism makes no sense. Because they have to jump through all of these hoops to try and make their policies make sense. And half of them are contradictory. Here you're complaining you want... He first he's like, no, I want Jerome Powell to cut interest rates to make money cheaper. And now he's like, no, no, no. Now, But now we need it. Now we need interest rates to be higher so money's not as cheap. Well, which one is it, bruh? Do you want money cheaper or do you want money not cheaper? Do you want to slow the economy down so that it, so there is less inflation? Or do you want to make it so that people can afford a house better? Which one is it, bruh? Doesn't make sense. People can't afford them any longer, then they stop actually buying things. And then what do the corporations have to do? Lower the prices. That's the reality, right? Um, but obviously the, the selfish ones. And, and, you know, price elasticity of demand, something that has not been brought up by any of these, you know, scholars up here, um, will affect the ability of somebody to be able to say, I'm just going to, you know, drop my prices or I'm going to raise my prices to make it, you know, what. If your good is price inelastic, i.e. it doesn't, demand for it doesn't change based off of changes of costs, then you're unlikely to lower prices because your good either is a necessity and it doesn't have, and it doesn't have much in the way of competition or alternatives. So therefore you're stuck with it. So therefore it doesn't matter how ex cheap or expensive money is, you're still going to charge this a similar or same amount of money for the goods. At, at the amount that they're being demanded for. Whereas other items that are price elastic, yeah, maybe those might have to adjust based off of other factors because a change in price will change the demand. But that would happen regardless of what interest rates were. So... It's out there. Right, want want it lowered so we can get, you know get free money from the banks again, guys. Right, basically free money. Um, but all right, listen, guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I do think Kamala Harris's tax plan is absolute trash. Kamala, uh, I don't like it because I know that it'll affect a lot of us, guys. Right, um, specifically ones who own corporations, guys. Um, but all right, guys, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day, and, and again, that's my selfish desire, right? Because I vote, I'll vote specifically for who lower my taxes. That may That's all. You don't care about women's rights. You don't care about body autonomy. You don't care about LGBTQA folks. 
All you care about is money. And that's the difference also between the folks who are liberals, leftists, progressives, etc., and folks like yourself. You, you are just going to make the money the bottom line. Without, without even a care about what happens to anybody else. Again, you know, that's the same type of argument that prevents people from cracking down on polluting corporations. Oh, I, I want to make more money, so therefore I don't want to be regulated on my pollution. I'm going to leave the country if, I, if, if, if they try and clamp down on my ability to pollute. Where are you going to make your goods and stuff? And in another country, that's probably going to be even stricter on, on uh, emissions. Or maybe you go to China and then you have to give kickbacks to the people who are running the Chinese government. Or maybe you go someplace else and you have to deal with another bunch of ridiculousness under um, a government that won't have the best military in the world to protect you in case shenanigans happen. This is the problem with conservatism. Or one of the problems with conservatism. Money is more important than anything else. And that's not how I roll. That's not how most of you roll. Yeah, we like to have more money in our bank accounts. Yeah, we'd love to be able to be more successful financially. But I'm not willing to do that and harm people in the process. If you can sleep with yourself at night knowing that your decisions have harmed people, then you're probably voting for Donald Trump. If, but if you are looking at how the situation is affected, you know, other people around you and might be like, okay, well, yeah, it might be nice for me to have more money in my paycheck, but I really can't do it if it's going to cause mean that um, more Palestinians are going to get harmed because they'll have a he, he won't even stand up at all to, to Netanyahu or uh, more LGBTQA folks will be harmed because, you know, he's not going to support those policies that protect LGBT, LGBTQA folks. Uh, more people who are harmed when it comes to pregnancies and abortion care because he's going to um, put in the abortion czar or whatever is going to take place. It's going to track people's uh, periods and track their miscarriages and track all this other stuff to make sure that, um, as Donald Trump once said, that there should be punishment for the woman, as he said, even though, as we all know on the show, as long as you don't, there are trans men and non-binary folks who also get pregnant. But, of course, Donald Trump's not going to recognize that because he, too, like the people that he loves, i.e. the poorly educated, um, can't grasp such things. So I'm not going to be sitting there and putting other people in jeopardy, even if I thought that they were right, that the economy would be better under Trump. But that's the kicker. Look, speaking of Charlie Brown and Lucy, is there's no evidence that it will. Trump's own actions when he was president during his first term harmed American farmers, harmed American steelworkers, harmed many parts of the economy. And then once he made that horrible deal for gas, once that once demand sh shot back up with that terrible deal, gas prices skyrocketed. Not because of Joe Biden, but because of Donald Trump. Donald Trump's deals, Donald Trump's policies will harm this economy too. We're not going to feel the benefits of it. I mean, anybody who might have been invested in oil at that time might have gotten benefit from it. However, everyone else had to pay higher gas prices because Donald Trump made a crappy deal. Anyway, that's my reaction to this video. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Remember to like the video, share it, um, and have a good day.